But it's a tremendous advantage to be an outsider. They have no other role in life, and this is the only thing that you can be, then <laughs> go so with bad. it. That's yeah. so John had an incredible story. His authenticity was enormous. And I didn't what spark the that? fire. The task was to find the fire. Prince is his own flame. But with Michael, it was utterly, utterly beyond belief. There is no such thing as being a genius. Every single day, you have to deliver things in wondrous ways to the best of your minimal abilities. When I was uh, asked to edit a magazine, and it turned out to be a magazine on something I didn't know anything about, rock and roll, and I accepted the job, I was working with my publisher. And every night after I finished my work at about 7 o'clock, he and I would sit down for an hour and just bullshit. And it was some of the most productive bullshit you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> And then when I started my PR firm, I didn't call it Howard Bloom. I called it the Howard Bloom Organization, even though I started out with one half of an employee. I shared an employee with somebody else. But the goal was to have an organization. The goal was to have a group of people. And we ended up with 15, a staff of 15 people, which was the biggest in the music industry. You can't do anything on your own. Prince would not be Prince if he had not been mobilizing other human beings. You need to gather a team. And you need, when you find truly talented people and are able to recruit them, you need to be able to keep them together and motivate them. When you see positive things they've done, you need to give them pats on the head so that they know they're doing something that's valuable to you. Because in the same way you need to be valued by others, they need to be valued, and you're their value. But what did you do? Was there a moment, a pivotal moment, that sort of... You yes. know, sparked a fire. There was him. a moment. And I didn't what spark the that? fire. The task was to find the fire. Prince is his own f flame. But it's a tremendous advantage to be an outsider. Because as, an outside, as a perpetual outsider, you can see the insides of things in ways nobody else sees them. That was the secret in the music industry, to be able to see beyond the silly little rituals that everybody went through to those rituals that worked and those rituals that didn't. And if the goal was to take Prince and make him a superstar, which he deserved to be, then the trick was use your science. Use your science to understand this field in ways nobody inside of it can understand it because they're too blind to it. They live in it every day, the rituals they think are gospel truths. No, a lot of them aren't. Well, when it you... means you have to prove yourself every day. It means that every day when you get up, it's as if nobody's ever said anything positive before about you, and you have to prove yourself that day, the next day, the day after that. The trick is persistence. The trick is just to, once you get a sense of what you're going to do, do it with all your strength and all your might and do it every day. Make sure that when you're fresh and you get up early in the day, you start to do the thing that is most important to you right away. It's exhilarating. It is exhilarating, because some days you wake up and you're depressed as all hell and you think you're of no value to anybody else in the world and all those things that people have said about you come to nothing in your mind. But if you push yourself through the first two hours of the day and absolutely make yourself stick to the priority things of the day, eventually you fight your way out of that. So there were 200 sheep coming in single file down one of these lanes and Carlisle's friend, the naturalist, um, decided to hold out his cane in front of the lead sheep to see what would happen. Well, the lead sheep jumped over the cane. And he continued to hold the cane out while the second sheep, the beta sheep, um, jumped over the cane. And then he withdrew his cane. And what do you think the 198 other sheep, sit, the sheep did? They jumped as if there were something there, when in fact there was nothing there. So if you're working with somebody like John Cougar Mellencamp, when I took on John, the press loathed him. They hated him so much that they reviewed his albums as absolute dreck without opening them. Um, they knew his personality, and his personality was ghastly, they all said. So what I had to do was go out to Indiana, spend a day with John Mellencamp the way I spent from 2 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night with Prince, to find that hidden soul, the, the God within him that danced him, that made his music. And we did it so successfully that we started at 9 o'clock in his living room, and we finished at 4 in the afternoon, and he was drained. He sat there with nothing left, no energy, in his chair. Now, how in the world do you win the press over when they absolutely hate him? Well, you recognize that Carlisle was correct. But today, we call the lead sheep an alpha sheep. Today, we call the, the second sheep a beta sheep. And I had to go looking for the alpha and beta sheep in the press community, and then I spent three years convincing them of the validity. John had an incredible story. His authenticity was enormous. And I had to make the case for that authenticity for three solid years, especially to those few who were lead sheep 
who are a little bit unconventional, a little bit off the beaten path. If they're a man, they're buying a little red sports car and picking up blondes and cheating on their wife because they have no idea of who in the world they are. When that point hits, you will just begin to be delivering the goods on all of those curiosities. And you will come back to mankind with a message, thanks to those curiosities, different than any message anybody else has ever delivered. You will know who you are because you will still be following your passions. And that's a message for thrivals. And, and that's, if there's a lesson in my life, that's the friggin' lesson. <laughs> um, no, I never thought that I would. Uh, I always wanted to be, but you know, to, to get to something, you, you never stop. I mean, somebody alluded to a quote from, that's in several of my books from Alice in Wonderland. And the Red Queen says to Alice, in this strange world Alice has just entered, to stay in place, you have to run. To get somewhere, you have to run even farther. This is all just a motivation to the fact that every single day you have to deliver things in wondrous ways to the best of your minimal abilities.